Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good all the time. I'm Bobby Daniel Co. Pastor of Woodbury Miracle Fellowship Center, along with our pastor, Bishop Thomas Daniel. Bishop Daniel Messi will be today. Face it. Face it. There are things in our lives that happen that we don't want to face. But the way we get past things that happen to us in our life, we face the truth. We face the truth. We can stay there and deal with it or face it and move on with our lives. Take the pain of it of what happened and allow it to push you into your victory. God knows all about us and he loves us anyway. So, hold your head up and face the issue head on and live. Now, receive with me today our Pastor Bishop Thomas Daniel and accept the word of God today. Face it. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So good to have you with us this morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Yes. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, because God is so good. He is so good to his people. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. God, we pray that you touch our hearts, our minds. Lord, open up your word unto us, Lord, that the people may receive it with joy and thanksgiving. Hide us behind your glory, for we give you all praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. We're in the book of St. Luke, the ninth chapter, and the 51st verse, St. Luke, the ninth chapter, and looking at the 51st verse. Amen. St. Luke 9 and 51, and it reads, And it came to pass, when the time was come, he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Again, and it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Let's imagine for a while. Can you imagine God sending his only son yes. who was in the beginning with him, who uh, was there. He said, let us make man who, mm -hmm. who was there when the things were created, the, the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, everything was created. Can you imagine God now making his man become flesh or making his word, which was his son, become flesh? And can you imagine him being born and his main purpose to be born is to offer his life yes. and his blood for the sins mm -hmm. of all mankind. Yes. Can you imagine the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. God had this plan already even before he made man. Mm -hmm. God all knowing knew that man with sin, so now God has already devised a lamb, his son, mm -hmm. to be the one that would give his life for all humanity. Because with Adam's sin, all of us were shaped in iniquity, born in sin, shaped in iniquity. All of us have a sin nature, mm -hmm. but God needed us to love him. So God, before the world was formed, Amen. Already had a lamb, mm -hmm. and that lamb was the son of God. Can you imagine a father sending his son to die, mm -hmm. and that death would free every living person? Yes. Allowing his son. Can you imagine? 
at Calvary, uh. where the event happened. Jesus' blood. Jesus' blood uh. made an atonement for all of our sins. Yes, even the people that had died before we got there. Even the people that are living after he went back to his father. Uh -huh. Every person that has been born in this world, the Son of God Jesus, yeah. made atonement through his blood for all mankind. What a job. What a job. And today we're dealing with Jesus set his face mm -hmm. to go to Jerusalem. Keep in mind that Jesus it was about 30 when he started ministering. Amen. So he, he was raised by, amen, uh, his stepfather, so to speak. Amen. Uh, Joseph. And, and, and Joseph was a carpenter. So he lived for 30 years being a carpenter's son. That was a time at 12. He went, they took him up to Jerusalem and he stayed uh, and the family had gone. Amen. They had to go back and get it. And then he asked his mother, don't you know I should be about my father's business? He was talking about what was going on in Jerusalem. But he went back with his parents and stayed till he was 30. At 30, that was his time to start his ministry. And, and would you believe he only ministered for three, about three and a half years. And at that point, he knew once everybody knew who he was, he knew that he would be killed. He knew that he would be crucified. Why? He came to die. Uh -huh. His job, his mission, the only way that he could save mankind there had to be blood shed mm -hmm. because without the shedding of blood, yes. there can be no remission of sin. And the only person, the only human being yeah. that could have done this was the Son of God. Oh. All men's blood, it's, amen, is spotted. Mm -hmm. Simply because we are all born under Adam, we are all born in sin, yes. but Jesus had no earthly father. Uh -huh. The Holy Ghost conceived Mary and she brought forth a son and they call his name Jesus, but he will be the one to save his people yes. from their sin. Jesus was the only one that had his blood was not contaminated. Yeah. The only one. So God used his son's blood and he accepted it. He accepted the blood of his son to make the atonement for all mankind. Neighbor, I don't care how you live your life. You can be born again. And, and, and all you got to do is accept the son. Once you get the son, once you connect yourself to the son of God, amen, that blood makes the atonement and everything that you've done in your past, everything that you do in your future, the blood of Jesus can make that atonement. All you got to do is confess your sins one to another and the Lord will heal you and deliver you from those sins. Can you imagine at Calvary also, one other thing he did, at Calvary, amen, they whipped him yes. all night long. Oh my God. They whipped him all. They tore his flesh mm. Apart, they beat him with a gruesome beating yeah. all yeah. night long. And can you imagine one man taking all sicknesses oh my God. to Calvary? Yeah. Oh my God! Not only did he take our sins yeah. to Calvary, and his blood was shed for our sins, mm -hmm. but can you imagine? the Son of God, one man, Jesus Christ, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Can you imagine him taking all of our sicknesses, yes. every disease, yes. every sickness, every name that you yes. can name. Can you imagine him taking that to the cross for every yes. mankind, for everybody, all of us. Peter put it this way, by his stripes you were healed. Yes, neighbor, at Calvary, cancer 
was taken care of. At Calvary, tuberculosis was taken care of. At Calvary, even this, this coronavirus yeah. was taken care yeah. of all sickness, sin, disease. It happened. The Son of God, the Lamb, amen, he took care of all of that at Calvary. Amen. We don't even have to suffer. If we can just have faith in God, if we can just believe the word of God. Jesus was the word of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word was made flesh. Jesus was that word. Yeah. And can you imagine if I can just believe all oh. things are possible mm -hmm. to him that believe. This was the plan of God. The plan was that one man, one man, one man, Jesus, one man should die for all men and women everywhere. Mm. What a plan. Only God could do this. Mm. Only God could come up with a plan like this. In our text today, this morning, amen, in that 51st verse of the ninth chapter of the book of Luke, amen, and it came to pass mm -hmm. when the time was come. Yes. Jesus has lived his life. He's 30. He's making ministry. He's traveling around, healing all diseases, blinding his eyes, opening. Amen. He fed 5,000 men. And you know there's more women and, and, and children there. He fed them with two fish, five loaves of bread. In other words, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus performed miracles. Yeah. My God, Jerusalem got upset when they had heard that he had raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus raised about three people from, from death. Amen. Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. Can you imagine? And then, after he died, mm -hmm. after he died, after he was crucified, do you not know that God gave him all power? Jesus turned, since he did such a great job of, of honoring his father, God gave him all power in heaven, all power in earth, all power in the grave under the earth has been turned over to his hand. Now, at the name of Jesus, Every knee must bow. At the name of Jesus, there's healing in that name. There's deliverance in that name. Yeah. Miracle working power yeah. is in that name. Everything you yeah. need has been turned over to the Son of God. Yeah. What an awesome responsibility. So in that 51st verse, and it came to pass when the time was come uh -huh. that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. He set his face. He prepared himself. Yeah. Can you imagine him loving the disciples? They traveling with him. They going all over. He's taking care of them. Uh, picked up uh, 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 Peter out of the water because Peter uh, walked on the water toward going to Jesus. Can you imagine him doing all that? Oh. Then all of a sudden knowing that one day he's going to leave. And when he leaves, they would be hurt. They would be killed. Different things would be happening. But can you imagine? Mm. He said, he's, he was determined. Yeah. He was determined to go and accomplish his father's will. That's the way we got to be about this word. We got to take this word, eat this word, live in this word, eat it every day. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. We got to get in this word to know how our Father would have us to live and then apply that word to our life. Don't just read it, but eat it. Get it in your heart uh -huh. and then apply it. Do the principles of what God has taught uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's the gospel. It's good, good news. news. Yeah. It's good news. And if you apply that word, you can have what you desire. You can, you can ask God for what you want, and he'll supply your every need. It's all about believing in Jesus' Father. It's all about believing in who God really is. Amen. Amen. God is such a great God. Mm -hmm. He's such a powerful God. Yeah. Let me talk about myself. I, I don't talk about myself too much. Let me share a little bit about my life. Mm -hmm. I got saved when I was 15 years old. I met God at the age 
I'm 50 and I went to the church and like the old folks said, my heart wasn't right, but something got a hold of me. That night, I didn't know nothing about no spirit. I, did, I, I, I really didn't know too much about God, but the power of God uh -huh. overshadowed my life. Yeah. I mean, it just literally knocked me down and, and the spirit just, just overshadowed me. Amen. And I, I just, I just, I just spoke and talked. I just, I just did. I mean, really, my head was hurting when I got through rolling on the floor. I hit my head so much on that floor. And when I got home, uh, my mama wanted to know, what have y'all done to my son? My clothes was tore off. That's what the spirit meeting Jesus did. It literally changed my life. Mm -hmm. And, and, and. Up, up until about 19 years old, I went, I went off to school, and in school, I, I was there for two years. I suppose I went to Miracle Valley, Arizona, uh, sit on the A, uh, a. a. Island, but I stayed in school, and when I stayed in school, I started hanging with the wrong crowd. It's bad to hang with people who don't mm -hmm. love God right. because they persuaded me mm -hmm. to walk away from God and to be like them. For five years almost, I backslid. For five years, I might sleep. And the Bible says that uh, 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 in Jeremiah 3 and 14, God is saying, turn, O oh, backsliding children, saith yeah. the Lord, for I am married yeah. unto you. Yeah. In other words, let, let me show you the love of God. God saved me, filled me with this spirit. At 15, I was called to minister. But my desire was to become rich and famous. My desire was to have a lot of money so that I can help my family and I can help other people. So what I did, I decided to stay in school. And when I stayed in school, I, 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 I backslid, turned away from God. And for four and a half years, almost five years, I lived in the miserable life of sin. Did things I shouldn't have done. Just, just lived a wretched life. But oh, but, but one day, when I met that same Jesus, I met that same God one day. And, and he asked me a question that day. I'd just done something wrong. And he asked me a question that day. He said, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? That day I made that decision. I made the decision. I'm going to dedicate my life mm -hmm. to him. At about 24 years old, I'm going to dedicate my life mm -hmm. to him. Because the only other opportunity I would have, either you're going to do what I tell you to do, or you ain't going to do nothing. I dedicated my life to God, and I, I've, been, I've been serving him ever since. Amen. At, 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 uh, at 25, I got married. Amen. At, 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 at 30, I started pastoring. At 35, I became pastor of the church. Amen. And, and for 40, amen, six years, I've been married. Amen. Been pastoring for 36 years. What I'm saying is that, maybe you have to make a decision. Yeah. You have to make a choice. Then when you make that choice, mm. you got to set your face. Oh you got to make up your mind that you're going all the way with that decision. In and out won't work. Mm. In and out won't make it. you got to make up your mind like Jesus did. He was set. Mm -hmm. His face was set mm -hmm. to go to uh, Jerusalem. Why? Because he was going to accomplish his mission. And now, every day, when you see me on Facebook, if you come to the church when we get back there, if you see me, I'm trying to accomplish the mission that God set out for me to do. And that's to tell everybody, whosoever will, let him come. Because my Father will take you just like you are. I don't care how low down, dirty, I don't care who you are. I, I, I definitely concentrate on folks that have walked away from God. Why? Because God is married to him. He never left me. He, he stuck with me when I was doing all that junk. He stayed by my side. He was with me all the way. And he's been still with me even now. And you know what? He's not going to leave me. And one day, 
I'm going to see him face to face. One day, I'm going to really thank him for saving my life, for helping me, for keeping me. And while I was out there, he kept me. He prepared me. He even gave me. I married into a family similar to my family. I loved it, my family. I married into the same type of family. That's how good God is. He has he had prepared everything for my life. He had prepared life for me. All I had to do was humble myself down and accept him. That's what his son did. All his son had to do was set his face. Mm -hmm. When you make a decision to live for God, he'll open a door for you that can't nobody share. When you make a decision to serve him, I don't care how broke you are. He, he, he got people that have jobs, give you all kind of jobs. He's that kind of God. We just have to make up our minds to serve him. Make up our minds to live for him. And he, he, God is such a good God. One of the hardest things to do in our life mm -hmm. is to face what happened. Yeah. Yeah. To face it. Millions of people today, millions of church folk mm -hmm. are in pain right now simply because we cannot face what happened. Whether it was in our favor, whether it didn't go down in our favor, but if it affected us, if it got in our spirit, a lot of people that love God, they're broken today simply because people walked out of their lives, simply because their marriage was broken, simply because things happened, a loved one passed, and they can't get over it. But neighbor, don't let one incident, don't let things that have happened to you shape you for the rest of your life. Today I'm coming to you saying, Get over it. I'm coming to you saying, face it. Face. Deal with the reality yeah. of life. Stuff will happen to us. Things will happen to us. Don't run from it. I'm not hiding. I'm, I'm sharing with the world. Amen. I backstage. Why? Because God was married to me. Mm -hmm. He hung in there with me and he brought me right back. And still he gave, a, gave me a poor life. That's the God. That's how great he is. That's why God is so good. Because he restored me. He renewed me. He justified me. He cleansed me up mm -hmm. on my way to heaven. And I'm enjoying the trip. That's the God mm -hmm. that we serve. Neighbor, you got to know what's right. You got to know your calling. You got to know why God saved you. You got to know why God loved you. And then follow his leading and follow his direction. God want you to help somebody else get saved. God want you to be a witness to your family. God want you to serve him. And then Jesus is going to come back and get you and take you back with God, his father, forever and ever and ever. God covered me those five years yeah. while I was out there. Now God is just blessing me and I'm enjoying his blessing. I'm enjoying his mercy. I'm enjoying his goodness. Listen, we have a, a saying in Woodbury. Amen. That saying is, amen. Uh, it may be, amen. Failure is not final. Mm -mm. Failure, neighbor, is not final. I don't care if you, you fell off the wagon. I don't care if you went out and walked away from God or your family raised you in the church, but you left and did your own thing. Failure uh -uh. is not final. That's not the end of the story. Amen. God, God. is following you. God is still calling you. God uh -huh. wants you to come. To him. God had a plan for your life. You weren't just born to be born, but God needs you. God, people can't see God, but they can see you. They can see me. And God wants us to be witnesses. Yeah. God wants us to have the power of him in our lives yeah. so that we can successfully witness about the goodness of who he really is. Yeah. So we got to face what has happened. Uh -huh. And don't allow that to destroy us, but let that Push us to become the children and men and women of God that we need to, to be like Job. Say like Job, though he slay me yet, yes. will I trust him? Job did not deny him. Job continued to yes. serve God even though he had lost everything. Yes. And at the end of the story, God gave him back everything yes. that he had lost. 
that's the God, that's the God. that you got to serve. That's the God that I got to serve. And once you serve a neighbor, you are loving for the rest of your life. Why? Yeah, because he is so good. Yeah, God is so good. Let's look at another example. Moses. Mm -hmm. Talk about Moses a lot. Moses led the children of Israel mm -hmm. out of bondage. But you know what? God told Moses, the children of Israel needed water. So God had the rock. Now, the rock, the rock, we call it the rock of ages. The rock was Jesus again. All right. And so where well, what was Jesus? He was everything. The rock was Jesus. The rock followed the children of Israel in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Jesus was there with them, not in the form of Jesus, but he was there in the form of a rock. The children were crying out to Moses, we got to have water. We don't have no water. We're in the wilderness. We don't have no water. We're trying to get home back to Canaan, but we don't have no water. So what God did, he told Moses, Moses, go and speak to the rock. Moses went and he got frustrated with the children of Israel. They complained all the time. They murmured, complained, fussed at him and Aaron. So what Moses did, he got frustrated with him. And instead of him speaking to the rock, he smote the rock. He hit the rock. Y'all want water, huh? Here it is. He hit the rock, which represented Jesus. Now, God got really upset with Moses. And what God told him, Moses, you will not finish your assignment. I will not allow you to take the children of Israel into Canaan land. I won't, I won't let you do it. Now, I love you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you see it. But I will not allow you because you didn't do what I told you to do. I will not allow you to, to, to go into that simply because you disobeyed me. Moses, you disobeyed me. Now, Mo that same Moses came down when Jesus was being transfigurated. Yeah. That same Moses, I'm going to meet him one day. Hallelujah. Yeah. What I'm saying is, Moses made it. But God, he had to face what he did. Yeah. He had to face. It was not meant. Jesus was only supposed to suffer one time. And that was at Calvary. Moses hit him before he was supposed to have suffered. And he was punished. Mm -hmm. David. Same scenario. David had to face what he did with Bathsheba. Yes, sir. Nathan told him, say, you the man. You the man that messed up. You had this woman, husband, kill David. Hmm. David set him up to die. David set Uriah up mm -hmm. to die. Mm -hmm. He had to face what he had done. He did Wrong. And you know what God told him? David, you king, you the son of David, see the baby hand. But David, it will follow you. It will never leave your house. David, you did wrong. Some things you reap what you've sown. It does not mean that God does not love you. What it means is that God is perfecting you. God has a plan for your life. And God will work it out. Yeah. The reason I come like I do, the reason I preach like I do, I'm, I'm after the bike slide because I know the pain of walking away from God. Yeah. I know you ain't going to be, you cannot no, be happy no, knowing God and not serving him. He's too great of a God. So that's my plea. That's my cry. Every Sunday trying to get you to come unto him. Yes. trying to get you to accept him as your personal savior I guarantee that he will change your life yes. David lived with that David didn't kill your life because he had messed up with God David became king mm -hmm. he could have killed Goliath I mean he could have killed uh, uh, Saul David did not kill Saul right? simply because David would honor God and he wouldn't touch God's manservant. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't touch him. The man who killed Saul, David killed him. David lived the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Why? He faced. Mm -hmm. He faced what he had done. Mm -hmm. And he told God one thing. He said, Lord, whatever you do, 
Don't take your spirit away from me. Don't disconnect from me. God, I got to have you. I got to have you. When I, when I was a backslider and, and I would wake up sometime and knowing that, that if I didn't get back to God, I was going to hell. Oh, that was frightening in my life. I had to struggle. I had to fight to get back. It wasn't easy. It was a journey. It was a journey. It was a journey. Yeah. But one day in Macon, Georgia, yes, you back to the roof, P. Calhoun, oh. got a hold of me and cast every devil, every demon, everything I had in me, cleansed me up, washed me. And since then, my God, I've been running. I've been running. I've been running. For my life. What am I saying? My, there are some people that I'm reaching. I may not be reaching everybody, but there are some people that I'm reaching. I'm trying to get you to turn. turn, turn. I'm trying to get you to go another direction. I'm trying yeah. to get you to go back to where you need to be. Face it. Yeah. Face it. Stop being bitter about who hurt you. Stop uh, uh, be trying to get folks back. Stop living like that God wants us to love everybody. God wants us to follow peace with all men and holiness without. No man shall see the Lord. One other person I like to deal with, that Paul. Paul was a character in Philippians, the third chapter. Mm -hmm. Amen. So many verses I like to read. I started at eight verse. Philippians uh, 3, third chapter, and the eighth verse. Mm -hmm. Paul is saying here, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them dumb that I might win Christ. What Paul is saying here that, hey, I've been a big wheel. I, I had access to the king before I met Jesus. And on, when I met him, I was on my way with paperwork to literally persecute the Christians who were calling on Jesus. And God knocked me down, yeah. knocked me blind, had, had uh, uh, someone to come and pray for me that my eyes would open. Neighbor, our eyes got to open and see who God really is. And Paul said, I caught everything that I had gained, mm -hmm. all the languages that I could speak, all the things that I could do, my relationships with the, with, with the presidents and the kings. I caught all that, but dumb, but mm -hmm. lost that I might win Christ. Ninth verse. And be found in him, mm -hmm. not having my own righteousness, not having my own way, which is in the law, but that which is through faith mm -hmm. of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. I'm walking by faith now. Yeah. I'm, walk, I'm, I'm living by faith. The just shall live yeah. By faith. I'm asking you, name to quit what you're doing and and and, and believe God. Mm -hmm. Go on God's promise. Yes. Stand on God's word because everything else is going down but the word of God. Mm -hmm. Stand on the word of God. Ten verse. That I might know him mm -hmm. and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Eleven. It by any means. I might obtain into the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after yeah. that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brother, in that 13th verse, mm -hmm. I count not myself to have apprehended, yeah. but this one thing I do. Forgetting, 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 facing, what happened? Mm -hmm. Facing how I had Stevens killed. Mm -hmm. Facing what I did. Forgetting those things which are behind. Uh -huh. And reaching yeah. for those things. Not the past. Don't live in your past. Yeah. Make your future glorious. And let God be a part of your future. Forgetting those things which are behind yeah, oh. and reaching forth to those things which are before. Paul said, I press yeah. toward the mark mm -hmm. of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Neighbor, you can make it. Press. You got to fight. You got you to have him done all the stand. Mm -hmm. 
You got to keep standing. People don't mistreat you. You got to love your enemies like you do yourself. And then when you somebody asks you and need help and they're your enemy, you got you to gotta go out of your way to meet that need. You got to be able to turn the other cheek. You got to be able to be, hold your peace and let God fight your battle. We become, when we get saved, we become a servant of God. And that servant is there to help people who don't know him yeah. to get to know him. I'm serving God right now by trying to get you to open up your heart. Uh -huh. You may have been broken and it may have been, been wounded, yeah. but open up your heart and allow the love of God to come back in. And therefore you can turn from your direction where you're headed and go straight back to God and allow him to come in uh -huh. and take over yeah. your life. He's that kind of God. Yeah. He's waiting on you. He'll never leave you. He'll never walk out on you, no matter what you've done. He don't even, as a matter of fact, he don't even see us. He only see the blood of Christ. Mm. And that blood of his only begotten son makes an atonement for our sin. Yeah, well. Therefore, he's able to say, and I'm able to say, whosoever will, yeah. let him come. You that are weak, you that are weary, Come, come like you are. You don't have to dress up to come to him. He know, he know your page. He want you mm -hmm. because he's going to put a new heart in you. He's going to put a new spirit in you. He's going to allow his son to come and minister the Holy Ghost to guide you. He has a plan already prepared for you. All he needs you to do is just have enough faith to believe him. And if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him or her. That believe. Neighbor, do you believe? If you believe, throw your hands up right now and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me yeah. of all my sins. Yeah. I repent right now how I've lived. And Father, I pray that you come into my life. Yeah. Touch my heart. I believe what Bishop Daniels has said. I believe that you love me in spite of what I've done. Receive me, Lord, mm. into your kingdom. I want to be your child. I want to be a son of yours. I want to know you in the free parts of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. I believe I confess that you are Lord and Savior. I believe in your son Jesus. I believe by his stripes. We are here and, and by his blood we are redeemed. In Jesus' name and by faith, I call it done and I accept it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's just that easy. According to your faith, so be it. Unto you. Neighbor, I'm so excited. Face it. Quit running. Go back to your family. Go back to your friends. Go back to your loved ones. Go, if you can get back to the marriage, get back to the marriage. Renew the marriage. Hey, talk to each other. Communicate. Get, get the brokenness together. He a man broken heart. That's the God that we serve. Until next week. Until next week. This is Bishop Ben along with Dr. Bobby Daniels. We love you. We love you and may God truly bless you as I pray. God bless you.